How's it going everyone? Welcome to Ultra Unknowns. Today I'm back in X Plane 11 for another flight sim tutorial and today I'm going to be just showing you how to do a basic autopilot setup in the Flight Factor A350. It's a pretty advanced aircraft, the only problem is you can't currently do any SIDS or STARS with this aircraft as it is not compatible with them yet but it will be adding that to the MCDU shortly. So I'm going to not waste any time, let's get straight into the video, into our cockpit. So here is where I have just set up for my flight and everything is all ready to go. So I'm, that's where I'm going to be taking us for this tutorial today. Uh, right where I left off in the uh, cold and dark startup tutorial is where I am at the moment now. So straight to the point, we've set up the aircraft from cold and dark to a point where we can start to configure the autopilot before we start our engines and get out of here. Now first what you want to do is open up your screen down there and you'll have it here visible to you. You need to make sure that FMS1 is selected and then you can go to active and go to the selection that says in it which stands for initialization page. Now the good thing about this aircraft is it simulates really well. You're able to use your computer keyboard to type this in. So first you want to put where you're departing from. I'm departing from Melbourne which is Yankee Mike Mike Lima. I can go ahead, press enter and that is there. Second I'm heading to Hobart which is Yankee Mike Hotel Bravo and press enter and that is plugged in and as you can see it is now configured on my screen. Next I can just add in my flight number which is BA224. By the way this is not a real flight as an A350 could not land in Hobart. And that is basically all that you need to really do for the top part of the page. Then you put in your cruising altitude as a flight level. I will be cruising today at 29,000 feet which is flight level 290. Enter that in and it will automatically put the temperature in automatically. The cost index, you can research that yourself really what a cost index is but it's basically the cost for an airline to run fuel basically and that is actually correct. My cost index for today is 30. Now I'm going to be heading along to the next part which is flight plan, the top selection. What you want to do with flight plan is click on your departure location click departure and finally you can the only thing that you can do is load a SID so Melbourne we need to select runway 16 is where we are going to be departing from and that's all we can do because you not cannot currently do a SID in this aircraft and as you can see we cannot do anything from there. So because of the problems with the aircraft and the current version which they're currently working to add SIDS you can come down to this FMS down here and click on that then you can go to flight plan yourself and you'll see it looks more like a typical A320 uh, flight plan so you can go ahead and click on Melbourne runway 16 and type in your next waypoint and if you did want to do a SID that was not planned and you could not do it, you would need to add in all of the waypoints manually using the next waypoint system. So I will only have one waypoint for my trip, which will be LT, Launceston, Tasmania. I'll click on that and plug that in. Yes, that is correct. It is 258 nautical miles. And then next what you want to do is make sure that you do not have any discontinuities discontinuity means that the aircraft will stop and fly in a straight line if you do not remove it. So how to remove it you just press clear then click next to it and it will disappear. So as you can see now the green line has appeared on my route for Hobart and once I go to the runway and take off it will follow that through once I press autopilot in flight. So I'm going to skip time forward now as I taxi out to the runway so we can get on to the next part of this tutorial. Okay everyone, we are back where we left off 
now and I have reached the start of runway 16 where I'm set for my departure as you can see on my uh, FMS here. So now all I need to do is really set myself for takeoff. I just turned on my landing lights so I'm set to go. However the last thing that we need to do is uh, make sure that we set our initial altitude which mine is weirdly 11,000 feet for today and my speed will actually be I'm going to be using level change not I'm going to be doing level change for today I'm not going to be using vertical speed so level change is when you set a specific speed and it will the aircraft will have you climb at that uh, to maintain that speed so 230 knots it is now let's get ready to go to taxi onto the runway and I apologize for all those uh, beeps that sound like the seatbelt sign in the cabin that is actually just uh, the notifications thing here as you get from your co-pilot and uh, uh, chief flight attendant probably telling me that I have not yet turned on the cabin lights and they're probably pissed off back in the cabin anyway here is runway 16 so I'm gonna go ahead uh, with my power set toga power there's V1 and I will rotate there there we go. I can put up my landing gear now. And the first thing I need to do after takeoff is make sure that I line myself up with the green lines here shown. That is my flight directions. And once you line yourself up with those to match, then you can go ahead and press autopilot 1. And there we go. I'm not touching anything now. Autopilot is uh, lining, lining up automatically with those green lines and it will put me en route for my first waypoint which is LT, Launceston, Lima Tango, 255 nautical nut miles from here. And as you can see, it's going to just turn me onto course for there. Now, as you can see, also at this point, I'm going to be starting to maintain my speed. As I selected my speed and my initial altitude, my aircraft is starting to climb uh, pretty steep at the moment because my flight level change speed is only 230 knots. So as you can see that blue triangle is where my flight level change set speed is and the yellow line is where my autopilot is taking me at. So it is currently climbing at a rate that will keep my speed the same at 230 knots. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and hope that you've got a bit out of it even though it was not to follow a checklist. Hope that you have just got some basics out of it though. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.